Well, hello there, friends. You're listening to Mastering the Task Exam with me, Mr. Abe Tasconi. Today's task science lesson is cell structures and functions. First things first, though. Here's a tip when taking the task exam. Don't spend too long on one question. Time is your most valuable resource on the exam. Yep, the task test is timed. The goal is to answer the questions you know. To do that, it's important that you don't spend too much time on one question. If you read a question and you have no idea what the answer is, just make a guess, flag the question, and move on. Once you've gotten through the entire test, go back to the questions that you flagged originally. If for some reason you run out of time and don't have a chance to go back and review, at least you've marked something, which means you have a one in four shot of getting the question correct. It's all about strategy. Now it's time to talk about something we have in common with every living thing on this planet, cells. Remember, by understanding general concepts, you will have what you need to pass the science portion of the task exam. Here we go. So what exactly is a cell? Ladies and gentlemen, these are blood cells. Howdy do, skin cells. Well, hello there, kidney cells. Nice to meet you, fat cells. The first thing you need to know is that a cell is the basic unit of life. To be alive is to have cells. So question, what makes a cell a cell? Well, the answer is, it depends. The first question we need to answer, is the living organism simple or complex? Are we talking about something complicated like a human? Or are we talking about something basic like bacteria? Humans fall into the complex category. We like to eat, laugh, communicate, along with a host of other activities that require an immense amount of processes to make those things happen. To achieve all the things we love, we need cells that are complex. The word you need to know is multicellular, which means we have a lot of different kinds of cells that do a lot of different kinds of things. Bacteria, on the other hand, don't worry about talking or feeling or dancing. Bacteria are classified as unicellular. These organisms are made up of just one little cell. You see, the only thing a unicellular organism is interested in is replicating itself. Boring. These would include paramecians, amoebas, bacteria, and yeast. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't yeast in most types of bread? Yep. So the next time you eat a sandwich, enjoy your unicellular organisms. Mm-mm, good. One topic you'll need to know for the task exam is the main parts that make up a cell. Are you ready? Let's do this. The most important part of the cell is the nucleus. It's the brain. The key function of the nucleus is to control cell growth and multiplication. This involves regulating gene expressions, initiating cellular reproduction, and storing genetic material necessary for all these tasks. A nucleus is found in eukaryotic cells. Oh wait, what? What's a eukaryotic cell? So it's important to know the difference between the two main divisions of cells. On one side, we have prokaryotic cells, which are brainless. Literally, they have no nucleus. An example of a prokaryote would be bacteria. In Greek, the prefix pro means before and the suffix karyo means kernel. A kernel is kind of brain-like in shape. All living things need genetic material, and a prokaryote is no different. Instead of a nucleus, its genetic material is floating around in the cell's cytoplasm, which is sort of like ectoplasm from Ghostbusters, except this jelly-like substance helps the pieces and parts stay in place inside a cell. Now on the other side, we have eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotes have a nucleus. Plants and animals fall into this category. In Greek, the prefix eu means true. 
and we already know that karyo means kernel. So eukaryotes have a true nucleus. Remember, you are eukaryotic. We now come to ribosomes. These little things are found in living cells that serves as the site for biological protein synthesis, which is really just a fancy way of saying a cell makes protein. To remember this for the task exam, the first three letters in ribosomes is rib. Think barbecue ribs. Meat provides our bodies with needed proteins. Ribosomes make proteins for the cell. Cells need lots of energy to function properly. This is where mitochondria come in. Mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of a cell. It takes all the nutrients within the cell and turns it into energy, which keeps the cell going. You'll need to associate this word with mite, which means strong and powerful. Remember, mitochondria, power. Organization is very important in life. When things are neat and tidy, they're easy to find. In a cell, storage allows for just that. Vacuoles store things like dirt and water. For the test, think of a vacuum cleaner. The purpose of a vacuum cleaner is to store dirt from your floor. Next, we have lysosomes. For this cell part, think of Lysol. You know, that nifty little spray product that has a unique smell, and it kills 99.9% .9 of germs. It's definitely a cleaning machine. Lysosomes basically do the same thing. They keep the cell clean and healthy with their digestive enzymes, which break down excess or worn out cell parts, along with engulfed viruses or bacteria that have made their way inside the cell. Now let's visit the ER. No thanks, Tom Hanks. I'm not fond of hospitals. This ER stands for the endoplasmic reticulum. It's a lot like an emergency room, which is chaotic with doctors and nurses running around trying to give life-saving supplies to people who are hurt or sick. It's known as the highway of the cell. It transports much-needed proteins, which keeps the cell functioning properly. The endoplasmic reticulum transports some of those proteins to the Golgi apparatus. This is where they're modified, then sorted, and then sent out for delivery. It's kind of like the retail giant Amazon of a cell. To help you remember what a Golgi apparatus does, take the first two initials and remember, giant Amazon. Amazon is a retail giant that sorts, packages, and sends items to their final destinations. Golgi apparatus changes, sorts, and packages proteins where they're secreted, delivered, to their final destinations. Now, the next two slides are two cell structures that animals do not have. These are specifically for plants. The first is a cell wall. A plant cell wall gives support and makes the plant strong, just like the walls in our homes. Plant cells also contain chloroplast, which is the kitchen of a plant cell. These cute little structures make food for the plant. You can find out more about chloroplast by watching the video lesson titled Plant and Animal Cell Processes. Alright friends, we did it! Remember. Review this video until you feel comfortable with the information that was discussed today, along with clicking the link in the description box that will take you directly to my Quizlet. I'm so happy that we can go through this important journey together. Stay safe, friends, and keep on studying. I'd like to thank Chris Matthews for providing the music for this instructional series, to Valerie Jeffers for co-producing, to Marion University and the Blue Umbrella for making this series possible, along with all the other teachers, townships, and other adult basic education programs who help inspire adult learners to reach for the stars. Mr. Abe Tesconi is the alter ego of me, David Taylor. If you have any questions about the task exam or if you would like to try some of my quizzes, please email me at tasktestquestions at gmail.com. This has been a Jeffers and Taylor production. See you next time.